What's up, people? GNR TV, streaming done right. It has all the channels that you would want. You know, the regular channels, channels from out of state, pay-per-views, sports, the movie channels, porn. It has over 2,000 channels in general. Over 2,000 channels. $20 a month for two devices now. Not one, but two devices for 20 bucks, and you get all that amazing stuff. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, there's no sports right now. There's not really many pay-per-views. Well, guess what? There is sports because UFC is back. And there's pay-per-views because guess what? UFC is back, and the rest of the sports will be back eventually, and it's worth it. This app is freaking amazing. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. I've had it for a little over a year now. I'm never going to get rid of it, and I love it. I love it so much. GNR TV, streaming done right. If you don't have it, you need to get it. And enjoy the rest of the show. Let's get slicing and dicing with Sir Sturdy Horror fans. On this podcast, you will hear me and a guest do some movie reviews, random funny horror chats, and whatever else comes to mind. So tune in, kick back, relax, and always remember, I'll see you in your nightmare. Mask. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Sir Sturdy. Hi. Got Chelsea on here again. Chelsea, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. And as we were talking just a few minutes ago about this movie, Abigail Haunting. I'm not going to spoil it. People need to watch it. It's on Amazon Prime. Watch it. But it was good. And one thing that I really, really picked up with this movie from watching it is you're really good at showing fear with your eyes. Thank you. That, <laughs> I think that it's so amazing because, like, as you know, I'm a huge horror fan. I watch a lot of horror movies. And I love when people show that scare factor, like, just emotionally on their faces. And you do an amazing, like, one of the best that I've seen, honestly. Oh, thank you so much. That means a lot. With your eyes, because it's just, you know how it is. Like, you could look at somebody's eyes and tell if they look really afraid or really sad or really happy. Like, you really know how to wear your emotions on your face, and that's that's amazing. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. How do you, now, Is there, do you get into a certain mindset to do that, or is it just, like, easy for you? Um, I just, I do kind of, like, I don't really have, like, a method for it. I do, it just, it's, like, something that's in me. I feel like acting is something that has always just been in me. Like I remember when I was like five or something, I was listening. I used to really like Shrek and I had like a Shrek soundtrack and I would listen to it and like pretend like I was in some dramatic movie and I would like, like jump across the couch and be like, no, and whatever, and just act out dramatic stuff. So I just think that's always been in me. Um, I have like had to deal with a lot of like really hard stuff in my life. And so I do draw from that on occasion, but, um, for the most part, it's just kind of there. And like, if I want to enhance it by drawing from something, then I do. And if not, if I just want to like have fun that day, you know, then I just uh, let it come out naturally. That's awesome. But I'm, I'm glad you liked the movie. I'm hearing a lot of like really good things about it from people. So it's super oh, cool. It, it was, it was a really good movie. And it was yeah. I'm, I'm really proud of it. I really like watching it too. I've seen it like a few times because um, we didn't get to have our like, red carpet premiere because of the pandemic and so I had like a bunch of my friends come over to my house and have like a premiere like in my house and that was really fun and then like different people wanted to watch it like my parents wanted to watch it so I watched it like again with them and I watched it like just with different people so I've seen it a handful of times and awesome. I think it turned out really well like it's it's one of the best films that I've done so I'm super proud of it no it, it's really 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 good and I feel like I'm not going to say this is the only type of role you can do because I don't know that but I feel like this <laughs> These type of roles are just like you really, really stand out in these type of roles. Thank you. As as like the, um, I don't know if you want to call it paranormal or what. Like I don't know what you'd classify it as. Maybe a little paranormal type. Yeah, supernatural. Like, supernatural. I'll I'll just say horror in general because you can still use similar emotions if it's like a slasher type. As far as the, again, the fear thing is what the story was great, but the fear is what really, really drew me to the movies. I'm like, she's really like every single scene that you see, you see yourself in, you're really into that scene. Like the scene where you're talking to the guy and you're happy. You can see it in your face. You can see it in your eyes. 
And then when you're upset or mad or scared, you can see it in your face. You can see it in your eyes. And even at the end of the movie, well, I'm not going to spoil it, but at the end, <laughs> when they show your face again, you can see your emotion in that, your face and in your eyes. And it's just, I think you did a really excellent job on it. A really Thanks. excellent job. And I'm glad you liked it. <laughs> again, I'm definitely going to review it and I'm definitely going to watch it again. And if you haven't seen yeah, you it, should. go watch Abigail Hauntings, people. It's a great, great movie. And I like I like how it's shot mainly in one spot, like the one area, I should say. Yeah. Instead of you know, it's cool if movies are shot all over the place, but I feel like again with the emotion, it just makes sense the way it was shot just in you know, mainly one area and just really brings out a lot. Yeah, for sure. How was it shooting that movie? For um, you? it was it was a really hard shoot. Like it wasn't it wasn't a fun thing but it's fun now because there's a lot of glory that came out of it so um i mean it, it did have its moments like it was a really really cool character and uh really awesome dialogue i really really liked how it was written like just how the lines were and all that and um mike Tesshouse, our dp was like really fun to work with because he does a lot of like the tracking and the gimbal shots and stuff and coming from a theater and dance background i like that type of thing where I'm like, I have to learn a lot of like choreography kind of thing um, with the scene. So I really liked that. Um, and it, we were shot in Vegas. And so like, it is, it is fun to get paid to live in Vegas. Cause like on the off days you can like go hang out on the strip and stuff. Um, but for the most part, like it was a really, really hard shoot. Like it wasn't like, it, I kind of tried to not think about it <laughs> after we wrapped it just cause it, it really, it wasn't, it wasn't a fun thing, but like now where it's coming out and we have all this like attention for it that part is like really really fun because um like obviously like I am in it for the acting and stuff too but like nowadays where these films that I've been in as like lead characters have started being released and I get to do like Q&As on stage with people and stuff like that is just like I'm up there doing that and I feel like that's what I was what well, that's what I'm supposed to be doing you know mm -hmm. and I like it just as much or more than the acting and so that's great because then when you have those like really hard shoots every once in a while um like when I shot this I felt like I I kind of missed out on the experience because I thought my whole life I dreamed of doing a movie like this and um I felt like I missed out because it wasn't at all like what I thought it would be or like how much, how much fun I thought it would be. But then afterward you get all this stuff. So it's like, even if you feel like you missed out during the film, like even if it wasn't that fun, it's fun afterward to have all the glory. <laughs> so, yeah. um, you know, and, and sometimes, sometimes the shoots are really fun and then you get both, which is great. Um, and I'm like, I'm still looking for that, like in a feature, but, um, it's kind of like, even if you don't have a great time doing the movie, you have a great time after. So there's always something that you get out of it. So um, that's how I look at it now. I feel like you'll get both out of it with a film soon, sooner or sooner or later, probably sooner than later. I feel like you'll get both out of it. I can, I guess. Um, what made this? Well, what made this a tough shoot for you? Was it just the different emotions in the movie, or no? Like it was not not talking about the acting. It was just like okay. it was like 14 hour days and oh, okay. um, just like I have. I have two very severe mental disorders. One of them is called psychasthenia and it's like super rare. There's only like a few hundred people in the world that have it. And um, the other one's called depersonalization derealization disorder. And that was actually caused by the trauma that I dealt with as a child with the psychasthenia. Mm -hmm. And so like during this shoot, I didn't have it as like under control as I do now. And so that like made it really, really hard because um, with the depersonalization disorder, um, something that it does is like, it makes you feel like you're not really there. You're like looking at the wall, the world through like a glass wall. And that's kind of what it was doing. And so that's why it like, it was really heartbreaking to me to, to be like on set of this like dream movie and not really like feel like I was there. But um, I mean, it, it worked, it helped with the character because that's like some really, some really like dramatic stuff to draw from. <laughs> so it helped the performance, but I'm very much like an experienced person. I think the experience is, more important than the performance and so like I wish that I could have had like the experience that I deserved to have on that set but since I didn't you know like 
there's nothing I can do about it now. And it, I think it really did enhance my performance. And that's helping me with this like crazy attention that I'm getting now, <laughs> which I also really like. So I guess it all, it all works out one way or another. Yeah. I was going to say, well, from you telling me about that, I can, from your performance, I can see where you say how it helped to enhance your performance. Mm -hmm. Just the way she was in parts of the movie. There was a lot of times where she didn't want to leave the house. She really didn't want to be bothered at all. And I'm, mm -hmm. I don't know your, I don't know, fair thing to say disability or disorder. But I don't know how that, how, like how your mindset is. If, if there's ever times you feel like you don't want to be bothered, you just want to just stay home, so to speak. And that really stood out in that as far as, which is a great thing. And I mean... Maybe it was just supposed to happen like that as far as the way you were feeling during this, during that time during the movie versus say you were in a, and no disrespect, but say you were in a better mental space. Mm -hmm. Maybe when it came out as good, just because her mental space in the movie was kind of yeah down, you know? Yeah. It wasn't, she wasn't in the greatest mental space throughout most of this movie. Mm -hmm. Again, I, I don't, that's just what I'm taking from it, from what you just told me, but either way, Love the movie. I can't wait to see more of your work. I really can't wait Thank to see you. more of your work. Yeah, I'm excited for you to see other things too. And one thing I can say is I remember you were on here about a, I want to say about a year ago. Mm -hmm. Between now and then, I can just see a difference personality-wise. Like now you see more, I don't want to say more happy, less shy, I'll say. Okay, less yeah. Less um, I, I feel that <laughs> in me too. That's great. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, I, uh, it's like, Abigail Haunting, the release of Abigail Haunting has, like, it's really, like, changed me as a person because, um, like, I have gotten to taste this, like, you know, fame thing and um, even other other films that have come out also, like, even, like, shorts and stuff that have gotten a lot of attention. Um, it's, like, there's so many things now that I get to experience that I didn't before. Like, I was in a lobby of a film festival recently and like all these people like recognized me and they were coming up to me and they're like, Hey, can you take a picture with my son? And like, it's so cool. Like to, to be like that person, you know? Yeah. And I feel like it's just like, it's given me so much like identity and stuff. Cause my whole life I was always like worried about like, you know, what I do and is this normal and whatever. And I always felt like I didn't, fit in with people and now that I've like kind of made a mark on myself or like not on myself but like on on the world or on the industry and like people know who I am now I feel like that has just like that worry has like left me because it's like I I don't have to be like other people anymore because I know my life really isn't like other people's and I feel like it's just given me so much more freedom to like do what I want and say who I want, say what I want and all that stuff and not worry about like what's normal because I'm like, people don't treat me as like normal you know, anymore. And so like, it's just given me so much like freedom and uh, identity. And it's like, it's really, really awesome. Like it's, it's changing my life. And I know that as other films come out, it's going to change my life further. And um, I'm excited to see where it goes. That's good. That's cool you say that, too, because people listening, when they do listen to this episode or watch this episode later on, I feel like what you just said is really going to help some people that might be going through similar things or been through mm -hmm. similar things and they really don't know where to go next or what to do next or where to turn to. And they can just say, you know what, this is this is who I am. I'm unique in my own way. And this is how I can do things for myself or whatever the case may be. Not just movies, but whatever, just in life. In yeah, general. yeah, exactly. And I'm not even talking about movies, really, because I always had a lot of faith in myself as an actress, but like just as a person, um, I just feel like I am like very different than other people. And I used to worry about that. And now it's like, I don't have to worry about that because um, I don't know. It's just like everything is coming together at the same time. And these films are like all coming out and um, like the fans and stuff that I'm getting from these films are like helping me realize that like I'm this person for a reason and I don't have to like, do what's normal I can just like do what's me-ish <laughs> and like if people like comment like that's fine and um, I used to like worry about that too like uh, I didn't really like attention and now I like I like attention a lot <laughs> and so like it's like that makes it a lot easier if people like comment like oh why are you eating that food and why are you doing this or what like whatever um like I it used to be like I didn't want them to do that and now it's like 
it's not so much even that I like don't care if they do that, but I, I like want them to do that because I like want the attention now. Mm -hmm. I've like I changed like a lot like since like a few years ago, so it's like been crazy. <laughs> that's, that's good though. I mean that that's growth. That's personal growth for you, and you're just becoming. Mm -hmm. From what you're saying, you're becoming more. You're becoming more and more comfortable with yourself, mm -hmm. which is a great thing. And then the attention, like you said, you like the added attention, which is always cool. Which can I mean for what you do to it can help you a whole lot. Yeah. A whole lot, which is a great thing. I just, I just think it's awesome. I'm happy. I'm happy, and I'm proud of you because it's Thank a you. great, great thing. Because again, like I said, when we recorded about a year ago, you were always a really nice person. You're always polite and all that good stuff. But you were, just, you just had a, like a little. You're a little shy, and you just need maybe you needed more life experience. And then with the acting and everything else that happened between from when we recorded and on, and I'm sure from even before then and on till now, and it's it's good. It feel, everything's all coming together with you now which is great. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you can see that. Yeah. It's, it's funny. Cause that it's, I, I could just see it. I'm just like, this is just so cool. Cause I remember before you were a little, not, not even shy in a bad, just a little kind of shy. You talked like you had a lot to say, but it, it just took a little poking to get out, I guess. And now you're just like almost like an open book, so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> which again, that's great, but it's, it's growth. I mean, it's growth. It happens. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I see that too in myself. And I, I like was describing it to my friend the other day as like a, like a flower. Like when I, when I met one of my really good friends, I was 18 and I felt like in that time I was like, like a flower bud or something that I hadn't opened. And now it's like over the like past few years I've like opened and it was like really hard to like open, you know, like, but now I like have all the way and now I can just like be this like flower I love flowers that's why I like just like compare it to a flower but yeah no that's good that's great though keep keep doing it keep doing it because not only are you doing it for you but there's going to be a lot of I'll say a lot of young females probably males and females are mainly a lot of young females that mm -hmm. are going to be watching this or listening to this or watching your movies and hearing your story and just being like oh wow I'm, I really look up to her because you know she she's kind of like how I am and now I know how I can change for myself or except myself, which I always think is an awesome thing. Mm -hmm. Thank I, you. And you're welcome. And I think just keep doing that. And I seen you're going to be in the movie, um, which I know we discussed this. I don't know how much we can discuss now, but the crumbs movie. Mm -hmm. Now, how is, yeah. that, how is that going? I know with the whole pan, did you guys finish shooting? Like I know the pandemic thing. Is yeah. Yeah. We, uh, we finished shooting last year. Um, uh, I don't really know like when it's going to come out. They keep saying summer, but I don't really know what that means because it is technically summer now. So I don't know um, exactly when, but it is like in the very late stages of post-production. So we should be expecting it soon here. Um, I'm that's, that's the one movie that I'm like really not allowed to say like anything about, but um, I can say kind of a brief synopsis is, um, I play Victoria Crumb, who's the daughter of this, like, very strange, dysfunctional family. And um, we make, like, a life-preserving serum. And in order to, like, obtain what we need to make this serum, we have to do some very sinister things. And so we, uh, we run a bed and breakfast in the woods together. And um, we are, are kind of... we. Uh, I'm not sure how to word this. We like, we do, we do some bad things <laughs> to uh, our guests that don't have a reservation. I'm not going to say anymore because there's a, there's a lot more that I want to say about it, but I'm not allowed to say very much. So I'm just going to stop there. Oh, that's perfectly fine. I get it. Cause you, you don't want, it's one of those things where you don't know what you can say exactly. You don't want to say too much and get yourself in trouble. Yeah. And I mean, I've, I've been told that I can't say very much. And I, yeah. I think I've, I think I've said more than I am allowed to on, on some other things. So I'll stop there on this one. Understandable. Understandable. Now, what do you have a favorite role that you've done so far? Um, if we're talking about like the the role, not like the whole experience shooting it, but just like the character, I would say Katie Frederick and Abigail Hunting because that that was like a dream. Like I that's that's the type of movie that I wanted to do for a long time, and I mean like that that one they never cut away from my character, which was like crazy. But the whole thing they never cut away from my character. So I mean, there's nothing's really gonna be able to beat that. <laughs> Like, just because, like, it was me the whole time. That's crazy. So, 
Um, that's my favorite out of the roles. And also that was like, even though the production was really hard, that was actually the easiest like role for me to play just because it like ever since the second I got the first audition sides for that, it was just like, I just knew exactly how to do it. And the, this is what I say about that role and my other roles is like a lot of times, most of the time between the audition and when we actually shoot the film, mm -hmm. the character changes like entirely because through all these callbacks and through like rehearsing it and being given direction and stuff. Um, like it's always like, well, we want you to do this a little different and that a little different. And the character ends up changing completely. But Katie Frederick was pretty much the same as like when I very first read the audition sides, like to myself in my house. Cause that's just a character that I just knew exactly how to play. So that made it really easy. So um, that would be my favorite character but oh also i forgot um i'm in a short film that's out of the features but i'm in a short film called lumeria that um that's my favorite out of the shorts because i'm basically like playing myself because it's like it's like the most me-ish film in the world because like when i was like five or six i made up this like little concept for a film called tile tile and i would like act it out and so in this tile tile, I was, I was having myself play like a, a princess and I, I wanted to have like this long pink dress on and all this stuff. And I had this little companion named tile tile and this whole thing. And like in Lumeria, like all that stuff is in there. Like I have the pink dress on and like, it's like crazy, like how similar that is to like this, this little movie concept I came up with when I was like a kid. Um, but also the premise of that is um, I play like a teenage girl who um, she believes that she's a princess of this magical kingdom called Lumeria and people like don't believe her. And so they, they think she's crazy and they put her in a, a mental asylum and it's a period piece. It's set in like the 19 early 1900s, which is my favorite time period to do. And so it's kind of like I'm playing myself because like with my whole history with mental health and stuff, and um like i come from my ancestors were royalty and stuff and it's just like the whole thing like the costumes and everything that's like if i okay if i was if i have to say this is like a really long-winded answer to a short question but if i if i was gonna say my favorite character regardless of like length of the film and stuff i would say claire and lumeria because that's like that's like myself um and it's a period film but if i was going off of like the features and like what I would want people to watch. Like if somebody hadn't seen any of my work and they were going to watch something, I would tell them Abigail hunting, but I've played a lot of really cool characters and I'm excited for people to see more of them. That's awesome. That's awesome. Now the movie you just mentioned it, the short, is that available for people to watch now or? Uh, not yet. We had our, we had our premiere um, in February and then the apocalypse hit and I got taken out of all the other film festivals. We were going to go to LA and have a Hollywood premiere and stuff for it, but um, that was canceled. And so if the pandemic dies down soon, they're going to put it in some more film festivals. And if not, I think they're just going to release it online so people can watch it and not have to wait. Um, but we're trying to get funding for a feature um, based on that short. So I would love to do that. Cause like, I just, I love that film. It's awesome. Cinematography is awesome. The costumes are awesome. I'm really big on the costumes, like Abigail Haunting. I really hated that wardrobe, like a lot. And like, I'm just such like a fashion person. And so I like, I think about the wardrobe a lot. Like, I'm not just like, oh, I'll wear whatever you want. I'm just like, oh man, like, I have to wear this. But like Lumeria, we had one of the costumes was like this blue kind of like Alice in Wonderlandy type of dress. And I played Alice in Wonderland on stage when I was 12, which was like a cool, um, like throwback to that. And then we had that like big pink dress and stuff. So I love the wardrobe. Like it really like ups the film a lot for me. Like if I get to wear costumes that I really like, I like the film more. <laughs> so, um, so I, I liked it because of that, but also just like the, our, my co-actors were awesome. The character was awesome. Um, just the fact that it was a period film, like the period films are like my weakness. Like if people, people have like started offering me a lot of roles, which is awesome. Um, and like, you know, some of them I do, some of them I don't, but if it's a period film, I just like, I have to do it. Like I love period films. I would like to do more of them. No matter what genre, like horror or whatever the case may be too, right? With the period films. 
Well, yeah, because I mean, you can't really, I feel like if it's a period film, you can't really make it cheesy. Cause like, that's something that I, that's why I don't really do comedy because like, I just don't, I hate sarcasm and I just don't like things that are cheesy. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I feel like with a period piece, you can't make it cheesy, you know, because it's either going to be like a period drama or a period. I've never done a period horror film, but that would be awesome. Like Crimson Peak or something. That would be really cool. Um, period. Uh, I mean, you you have period comedies, but they're just like they're so like offbeat that like they're not weird. You know, I feel like comedies they can get weird a lot of the time. But if it's a period piece, you have it. You have to have a certain extent of class in it, and so I think that's why I like it a lot too. And um, I feel like I am kind of an old fashioned person in my like values and how I like just like sit and stuff. So. Um, uh, yeah, I would, I would like to do more of those. That's cool. That's cool. That'd be interesting though. Seeing you in a period piece, a horror period piece. I think you could pull it off. That would be, that would be super cool. I would love to do that. Yeah. I think you can pull that off. Now you, you told me your favorite roles and all that stuff. Oh, with, with this Abigail haunting, is it out on Blu-ray or DVD or anything? For those not yet. Not yet. I think it will be in August. Don't quote me on that, but I heard last month I heard that um, it's on Amazon US right now. And mm. then like, I've heard that this month it's going to go like, it, I mean, it's in, it's already in like a, a lot of countries cause I'm getting a lot of like Instagram messages and stuff from people like all over the place. So I know it has gone pretty worldwide, but I know they can't get, but I think this month it's going to go like Amazon UK or something and okay. they will be able to get it in the UK and Canada. I'm not sure exactly when, and then um, they're going to do like other platforms as well. And then I think in August it's going to go on DVD, which I'm excited because we filmed this whole like behind the scenes little documentary thing, and we did a bunch of interviews and stuff like that. And I've never seen any of that footage because they're like they're saving it for just exclusively like the people that buy the DVD. So I um, mean, I'll be buying the DVD so I can see that. <laughs> so I hope uh, people can. Uh, I hope that that opens up a whole new like gateway of of audience people for us because Amazon is a huge platform, so we're really lucky to have that distribution deal. But um, when it goes on these other platforms too, hopefully that'll give us an even wider audience. So I'm excited for when that happens. Definitely, definitely. And I was asking about Blu-ray slash DVD because I I do enjoy getting the hard copies of movies, especially if it's a movie. yeah, I do too. And I would love to get this signed by you. So I'm like. This, I hope this comes out in a hard copy so I can send it to you or order it and get it sent to you, get it signed and then sent here. That'd yeah, I, I would love that to would, do that for you. That'd be awesome. That'd be really cool. And again, like I said, I, can, I just can't wait to see you in more stuff. And I would, again, I don't want you to have to stick to the same type of role, but I would really love to see you in more movies similar to this as far as the paranormal aspect of it. Mm -hmm. maybe, a, maybe a slasher. That's my favorite genre, but slashers, I guess it's not. I don't think I would do a slasher, honestly. No. I mean, I, I, I would do, I would do one that's like not really a slasher, but like, I mean, if it had like, if it had like a couple scenes that were like gory, I would do it like, like an Ari Aster film. I would definitely do an Ari Aster film. Um, but like, uh, just like a straight like slasher, like, I don't think I would do that. Like I've, I've actually been offered a couple of those and I turned them down for that reason <laughs> because, um, I just feel like horror is, such a specific art, you know, like Abigail Haunting, I think of, I think stuff like that is a horror film. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, the slashers, I, I just don't think always do justice to what I think horror should be. But I mean, you never know, like if I if I get offered a certain thing, like I, I, I would, I would, I would, I would always like read the script first. But um, I, I don't think I would, I don't think I would choose that. I like the psychological horror that like, it's like creepy, but it makes you the type that you like have to think about it, you know, yeah. like that's what, that's what I like about um, stuff like Abigail haunting and um, the conjuring and uh, horror films like that is like, I, I like it when it doesn't have a lot of profanity and it doesn't have a lot of like blood and stuff, because I don't think you need that. Mm -hmm. And also like, I just as in a personal thing, like I hate having that stuff on me. Like I'm in this movie called the 13th cross. That's not a horror film, but it's a, it's a dramatic thriller that'll be coming out later this year. 
And there's this one scene where I have like so much blood on me and like, I hate that. Cause like, I just hate being dirty. <laughs> and so, um, just for that reason, I wouldn't want to do that just cause I wouldn't want to have the blood on me. But also I just don't think it always does justice to uh, the genre, but you never know. Like I'm, I'm an open-minded person. So you might see me in one of those one day and be like, Hey, she said she wasn't going to do that, but you, know, you never know. I, I, I thought you said you weren't going to do this, but I, I do get where you're coming from as far as like, with the paranormal and psychological ones, there's really a lot more fear into it than a slasher. Slasher, mm -hmm. I'm not saying they can't be scary, but they feed off of more of jump scares, I'll say, and then like the blood and guts. Which, yeah, again, I'm not a I'm not a blood and guts person. <laughs> I enjoy seeing it on screen, but I I understand where you're coming from. My wife's in the same boat as you, as far as like her favorite is the paranormal and the psychological thrillers and all that kind of mm -hmm. thing. Loves that kind of stuff. The Conjuring is, I love those. I do love those movies, too. Yeah, I actually auditioned for The Conjuring, too. Fun fact. Really? Yeah. I auditioned for um, Margaret, who's the older sister in The Conjuring, too. Oh, wow. When I was 16. And it was, like, it was a really cool audition. It was the, the I didn't, like, make it past the first audition, but um, the first audition was the scene where they're on the bed, like, playing with the Ouija board. And it was, like, really cool, because, like, I love doing the British accent. And I think, I think I did the wrong kind of British accent because they just said British. And so I did the standard, like, RP, British accent. And then, then I, like, watched the movie, and they were Cockney. And I was like, oh, I didn't do the Cockney. Because, like, I wasn't into The Conjuring at that time. And so, like, I didn't know that they were, like, true stories. Or, like, true stories. Like, I didn't know that. And so I didn't know to research that person because I didn't know she was a real person. And so they're just, like, British accent, whatever. And so I just, like, wore whatever and, and did a – just a standard RP British accent. And then later, like when I was like into that series, I was like, Oh, like I should have saw what this person looked like and tried to, you know, look like them more and uh, do the right type of British accent. Um, because I didn't know they were like, I didn't know the whole like Ed and Lorraine thing. I didn't know it was real. <laughs> so like, that's like, that's like how I got into the conjuring though, was I, I auditioned for the second one and, I hadn't seen the first one and I thought I should like for pretext. And so I watched it and I was like, wow. And it was like, it blew me away. So, um, then, uh, I got into that <laughs> series. I'm excited for the third one to come out. You and me both. I can't wait for that to come out. I cannot wait. And that's, that's, I mean, that's a huge franchise as far as after part three, you know, there's going to be, if not a part four of the conjuring, there's going to be another spinoff of something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's so many spinoffs of that. <laughs> Maybe there's a possibility you can go and get a shot at one of those. Oh, I would love to do that. That would be so cool. That would be great. And it's it's not out of your realm. And it's like, it's not something that's, that can't, I, I do feel it can happen. I, I'm one of those people who feels, obviously you have to work hard at your craft. You have to work hard at what you want to do. But if you put that positive energy out there too and work at it, it's, it's going to come your way. One way or another, it's going to come your way. Because there's a mm -hmm. lot of people who just, they have the talent, they have the skill, but they don't have that mindset. It's all, oh, well, they're not going to pick me because of this. Or I'm not going to, you know what I mean? And then you, once you put that energy out there, that feeler out, it's just not going to, to me, I feel it's not going to happen. But I feel you're the complete opposite of that. You're just in your, you might not say it out loud, even if you don't say it out loud, but in your mind, you're like, I can probably do one of these roles. Mm -hmm. Like a shot and just, as you're saying with this, the Conjuring 2 role, you would have probably had a better idea if you would have did more research, you know, watched the first one, did a little bit of research and went from there and you would have known. You just, you said from the accents alone, you didn't know it was a different type of accent with the British accent. Mm -hmm. And now you know. And it's a learning experience that might have helped you in other movies and other ways that you just didn't even think of at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I have, um, now I'm a lot more aware of like the true story thing because like that's not really always something that you think of. Like if they tell you this character is like this age range and this like ethnicity, you just, you feel like that's all that you need to go off of and then but like sometimes sometimes it's a true story and they like they don't tell you or they say it and you don't really think anything of it but it's like if it's a true story like they're obviously going to cast somebody that looks like that person so you, have, you need to try to like look like that person like I mean I wouldn't go to extremes in the audition like I wouldn't like have my hair or anything for it but like there are a lot of ways you can like look like a person you can just like google them and like see like what their style is or yeah. you know how they wear their hair or, you know if they look younger don't wear makeup if they look older wear makeup <laughs> you know there's like there's things you can do um so that's something that I'm like aware of now is like like is it a true story <laughs> because if it is I'm gonna do my research more now 
just speaking on the conjuring real quick do you like like the whole thing like the annabelle movies and all that too or is it just the two conjuring? um i yeah i like them uh, the the very first conjuring i think is the best out of that whole universe I but know. um i yeah i do i have seen the others and i like them and the nun that's another one i just remember. oh yeah the nun yeah that i do enjoy that a lot and i get maybe we'll see you in the big screen on one of those which would be great yeah hopefully it can happen. It can definitely happen. Mm -hmm. By the way, do you like my house? I grew up in this house. Did you really? There's a bear right there. There's a, That's nice. a, paint, a picture, a bookshelf. Wait, there it is. The paint. I see the. Well, I can't even point at it because it looks like I'm pointing at my background. I see the bookshelf on the my left and mm -hmm. then painting next to the. So, um, also, like, this desk is like just one of like, just like one of those old fashioned desks. And so we like my family like inherited like so much stuff with, over the past like few years from my great grandma and this thing right here wait it's backwards wait ah over there okay this thing right there mm -hmm. it didn't come with the desk and it looks like it's just part of the desk right but it's not it's like a separate piece and um we have like little things in there and oh and oh you can't see that i'm gonna just show you guys something so I'm really into making paper flowers because I just love flowers. Oh, that's nice. So we have these flowers. We have a purple one. Nice. Flowers remind me of frosting. And that's one of the reasons I love them. Okay. Anyway, I just had to show you my Hang house. On. Hang on. First of all, the, the stuff you did show was cool. And that desk thing, I... I feel like my mother has had has or had one. Yeah, it's a it's a roll top. I won't I won't roll it up right now because it's my mom's desk and I don't know if she uh, has I stuff in there. She doesn't want on the on the talk show, but <laughs> Been there. but the flowers and frosting thing. Could you explain that? Why why they remind me of frosting? Yes. Well, my whole like childhood, I loved getting cakes with like big frosting flowers on them okay. for just like lots of occasions like not just my birthday but like random like this is my like doll's birthday or like it's my, it's a whatever holiday I don't know and I've just always loved frosting because it tastes like a miracle and so we always had cakes like when I was little with like the big frosting flowers and so now like big open flowers remind me of frosting so what's your favorite I'm now I don't know much about flowers. I could just look at them. My wife knows she loves them. But what's your favorite flower if you had to choose one? Oh, well, um, I don't I don't think I could choose one. I'm not going to choose one cuz I I just love all of them. <laughs> all of them. Do you have any flowers like a rose bush or anything like that? Or? Um, not not at the moment, but we've I've been like thinking about getting one though cuz we have this like big pot in the front of my house and um, I'd like to put like like bright pink and purple flowers in there, like dark purple flowers and like bright pink flowers or something like that. See, my my wife would be like in heaven with something like that. She would she'd be the <laughs> person like if you two knew each other, let's go get them right now. Let's go set it up and just it'd be like a whole day event. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I guess I mean it's a, if you're into plants and stuff and flowers, it's it's not a bad thing at all. But that's interesting sure. though. That's interesting. And that de that desk, yeah, I know my mother's either has or had one. And sometimes she would, like, stack a bunch of stuff in there, and you go to open it to grab something for it, and everything falls out. And then it falls out, yeah. <laughs> and it's a pain to <laughs> open and close at times. Yes, yes. Yeah, I like it because it's, it's, it's old like, old-fashioned. Yeah. And it fits with the way how you say your personality. It's kind of like an old-fashioned, like an old soul. So I, I get it. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of sense. Pro show. <clears throat> Do you have any upcoming roles? Or, um, again, I know this whole crazy pandemic thing is throwing everything off. But yeah, not well, it's, it's actually, it's worked. It's worked out for me. It's kind of like, it's kind of like it, it happened, like, for me, kind of. It's, it's working out because um, I, I did so much acting last year that I, I felt like I just did, like, way too much acting. And so, like, this early spring like more like late winter I actually like decided for myself because I was having a lot of like problems with my psychosthenia and stuff um I decided for myself like okay I'm not gonna act for like a while you know 
until like the end of the year, like next year or something. Um, and I didn't know this pandemic was going to get like nearly as crazy as it has. Um, but I just like decided that for myself, like, okay, I'm not going to be in any movies like for a year or so. And then, um, I was thinking like that might be kind of hard for me because I, I'm definitely one of those people that like is afraid of like missing out and stuff. And so I thought, you know, there's going to be all these movies that people are offering me and all these movies that I know people in and stuff. And I'm going to like, feel like I'm missing out by not doing it. But I think that that's the best thing for me is to not do it. And it was like this big thing, like, Oh no, am I going to miss out? And then all of a sudden, like there's this pandemic and they're like, okay, nobody's allowed to like film anything. And I'm just like, Oh, okay, that works because now I like, I don't have to do it and I don't have to feel like I'm missing out. And then when I'm ready to get back to it, the world will also be ready to get back to it. And I think I'm probably in the back of a lot of people's minds for uh, the upcoming roles <laughs> this coming out. So when they're ready to do that, then I'll be ready to do that at the same time. And so I think it's, it's creepily worked out for me in that way. And also um, with Abigail having an Amazon deal, it was like, it came out like March 27th, which was like the dead center of everybody has to stay at home thing. And so it was like, everybody's at home, like watching Amazon and all the movies that were going to be in the theater are like released on Amazon. And so everybody's like flocked to Amazon. And then it's like, while they're there, they're going to just see this movie. And so I think that that's one of the reasons why it's so popular and why a lot of people saw it and were able to find it was because they were like at home watching Amazon and then it was like released right then. So, mm -hmm. um, and that's actually, it was actually going to be released later and our director like reached out to Amazon and asked them if they could release it early just for that reason. And Amazon was noble enough to let us do it early. So thank you, Amazon. Um, that's but yeah, like it's like, it's like the whole, the whole apocalypse thing is like, really worked for me it's really weird like everybody else it's like causing these like huge problems and I mean it's it's caused problems for me as much as you know whoever but for the most part it's like helped me a lot mm -hmm. um and also like uh just like to get my like disorders and stuff like under control and everything I feel like I needed time to like have the world be stopped so I could like try different new things that we've like recently found out might help it and and try to get it under control and stuff so like career wise and just like me wise it's like it's like been a good thing <laughs> so that's like pretty weird it's like it happened like right now for a reason i agree with you 100 percent on it and it's helped me in a way as far as my podcast goes because i haven't been back to work since march 17th i do work mm -hmm. late so they're paying me to stay home which i mean not a bad thing yeah but I don't even know how many episodes I've done as far as recording. I just have to do a lot of editing to get them out, but I've done mm -hmm. I'd say at least between 30 and 40 episodes from between March 17th. I didn't start on that exact day and today. Yeah, that's I've a lot. A lot. And I feel this is the great, this is like the perfect time to, for anybody who has those home projects that they never got had time to do. I mean, for the ones that are yeah. at home, but you know, they'll probably, I got to do this, this, I just don't have time. You have plenty of time to do that. You have plenty of time to work on your craft, whether it be podcasting or whatever the case would be. You have time to work on your craft and just work on yourself in general and come out of this better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. But it is, it is, it's like, it's kind of like a, a horror movie in a sense of yeah. being shut down. It is, home, it is pretty home. weird. And it's just, I mean, it's, just something we gotta live with i guess that's the best way mm -hmm. i can say it and get through it hopefully come out like i said hopefully everybody comes out as a better person not mm -hmm. just for themselves but to each other and yeah for sure i would say things it would be great for things to get back to normal but i think we need things to get back to better than normal yeah yeah i agree with that it's, um it's, it's really funny though because like i've always been like the type that like uses hand sanitizer and stuff like that anyway and I just feel like I used to be like the only one out of like my, you know, friend group or whatever that like did that. And now everybody's like, oh my gosh, we got to use hand sanitizer. Like, do you want some? And I'm like, I like have that in my purse. Like I've always like brought that with me anyway and stuff. And um, like the whole, like you wash your hands after you like open the door or something like that. Like I've always like been that person mm -hmm. and like everybody else was like, we don't need to do that. And now like they do. <laughs> it's really funny. <laughs> It, it, it's crazy and funny in a sense of like a lot of how they're saying, you know, how you can help prevent it 
washing your hands. And I feel that's like, why, they'll say like washing your hands before you eat, wash your hands after you use the restroom, like the main two. Mm-hmm. Just like, I think to myself, I'm like, what adult does not do that? But then when you mm-hmm. go out in public and when you work with the public, like you use the restroom, you'll go to wash your hands and you'll see somebody else go to use the restroom, come out the store and just literally walk right out. I'm just like, what? Yeah, so like, that's, that's so lame. That doesn't make any sense at all. And it's just simple things like that. And it was funny. It was funny in a sense of how like, when this whole pandemic started, what was gone? Hand sanitizer, hand soap, and toilet paper. Like that mm-hmm. was sold out everywhere. Why? I still have no clue. I have zero clue why people bought that much damn toilet paper. I'm like, yeah, that yeah. Much? It's really funny because my grandma has always been like really into the whole like storage thing. Like she's thought something like this was going to happen for like decades, and so she's always been like buying us like food storage and herself food mm-hmm. storage. She has like a, she had a when I was like in high school, she had like a food storage thing that was like taller than like me and my cousins. It was like this big thing of food storage. And so she's always like been like that. And so now everybody's like hoarding the toilet paper and she's like, Oh, I have like this stash of toilet paper that I've like had. And so she like went into her house and she found this toilet paper that she'd bought in the seventies. And she's like, Oh, now we can use this. And I'm like, you had that in there since the seventies. Like that's crazy. That's hilarious. (laughs) But see, see, that's different with like the old, I'll say with the older generation because they would get stuff. And just kind of get it, like, before it runs out, you know what I mean? Like, hey, I'm going to go grab, say, a 10-pack of toilet paper rolls, and then a couple of weeks, I'm going to grab a couple more. But these people are buying, like, cartfuls of stuff, which is just greedy. It's greedy. Like, they're just thinking of, like, hey, I'm going to need this, this, and this. Because I had an aunt that was like that. Like, she had, I'm not even lying to you, she had in her basement, like, she had shelving. It looked like a freaking grocery store down there. Like, yeah. canned goods, everything, and everything's, like, lined up perfect. Like, hey, you know, I'm Beth, I need a can of beans. Go downstairs. Pretty much like go downstairs, aisle seven, row six. Make sure you pull the other kid up. Don't mess it up because I'll know you did it because I sent you down there. But she'd have like all the canned goods, toilet paper, all this kind of stuff, and then you know the big, the big tall freezers, mm-hmm. all that. And that that I do understand. I get that. So it's just like you never run out of stuff in case something does happen—a pandemic, power, whatever the case may be. Yeah, I get that. But then when something happens, I just think it's crazy how and selfish how people will go out there and just buy everything. I'm like, you don't need 70 rolls of toilet paper at this. Yeah. Just buy a good 20. You could buy one big 24 pack and bring that home. You don't need to buy 10 24 packs for you, uh-huh. for yourself. Or you're a single wife, a single man or a single. You live alone. How yeah. Much- and I don't, I don't know if they do this where you are, but um, in here in Salt Lake City, it's like they have these like kind of like almost like police type people like at the grocery store and they like don't let you buy like more than one of each thing like paper towels or whatever like they have people at the end of the aisle being like you can't buy more than one like even if we have like two like you can't buy two (laughs) it's calmed down but um my wife was saying i think she went to like walmart or something this is close to the beginning when she was going like they would hand out toilet paper rolls Mm -hmm. yeah they did that in one of the stores here and it's it's funny in a sense and it's sadness. It's like we really came to this where people don't know how to just grab what you need at that time. You know, mm-hmm. for like that is weird. You don't have to prepare for six months, and now people have to, people are gonna have toilet paper for like the rest of this year, and not even yeah, like, probably like, longer than that. Yeah, for like for what now? What like I was watching videos on either Facebook or YouTube where this lady had a cart full of toilet paper, like a shopping cart full. And you open up her trunk, and her trunk's full of toilet paper. I'm like, why? <laughs> yeah, that is weird. And it's 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 one of those things too, where I think it's bad because then you have people that are less that are less fortunate. They can't go out and buy; they can only buy what they can afford. They can't go out and buy fifty rolls of toilet paper and then bring that home. They go out there and try to get you know a couple of rolls for a few weeks, and they can't even do that. Mm-hmm. And I'm I wouldn't have an issue with it as far as when this was going. Like, say, if those people that are buying all these rolls, if they're giving it, if they're helping people in their community or helping people, like, here, here's a roll, you know, here, here, here. But they're just hoarding it for themselves. Or some people are selling it. Like, the hand sanitizer was crazy. People, just, I mean, you're really trying to sell this. Like, why would I buy this from you when I could just wait a few weeks to go to Dollar Tree and get the same thing for a dollar? <laughs> you bought 40 or 40. You want, to pay, you want me to pay $20 for a, one little bottle of hand sanitizer? That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, it's pretty made, weird. <laughs> somebody's going to do a movie about it. If I'm sure some people already started, but somebody's going to do a movie about this whole pandemic thing. Yeah, for sure. Switch it up. And it's just, oh, man. <laughs> I can't wait for it to be over in a sense because I just, 
not that I don't mind being, I don't hate being at home, but there's just certain things like I wish I can just go out and do, just go out. Yeah, and- for sure. I, I do wish that more things would open. It, it makes you miss stuff. It makes you th- miss like simple things. Like one simple thing I get, and I feel, feel for the, you know, the workers who have to wear their masks for their whole shifts and everything, but just running in the store, throwing a mask on that gets annoying after a while. It gets hot. And then just not being able to go say to the movies, for example. Like, yeah, exactly. Movie. It's and people say you can go to the. You, I know you can go to the drive-ins now, but it's not the same. Yeah, I think the movie theaters are going to open here in like a f- couple of weeks. They say that anyway, so hopefully they actually do. <laughs> I wonder how they're going to do that though. As far as seating, it's going to be limited. Like say, I don't know how big your theater is. Let's just say it can hold a hundred people. It'll probably be like half capacity mm-hmm. with social distancing, which. Honestly, I really wish theaters had social distancing from the beginning because, like, you yeah. know, let's say if you go on a date or you go with a group of friends or whatever the case may be, and then you have, like, 40 people come – or, no, I'll, I'm exaggerating. You have, like, eight people sit, like, right here in front of you. Like, the whole yeah. thing is empty. Why do you ever sit yeah. right here? One time, me and my mom went when I was little, and um, we, were, like, sat there, and then uh, the, the theater was empty, and we, like, sat there, and then – like these people came and came and like sat right next to us. And so we didn't want to sit by them. And so we like got up and moved and then they came and followed us oh. <laughs> like sat next to us like a second time. And then we like moved again, like on the side or whatever, like where there wasn't room. But it's like, why? Like, what's the point of that? <laughs> I don't like, I don't like that. Like if, if, it's different. <laughs> if you're with people, you know, it's one thing, it's cool, but it's like, I want to be kind of separated and spread out. Cause say if you people are talking, I don't want to get mad cause you're talking. Somebody yeah. Like in theaters, or if you're having a quiet, quiet conversation with somebody, just, whatever the case may be, it's just like just spread out. I don't want to hear mm-hmm. you your loud bag of chips. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. Go sit up there. Yeah. But it's it's I can't wait for stuff like that. Like I'm into um, drag racing with cars and all that, and the track mm-hmm. just opened, but they're only allowing say a racer and like two crew chiefs or whatever. So there's no fans in the state. It's just. I'm going to go eventually, but it's, it's just so different. It, it just, it takes the fun out of some things. Cause sometimes you just mm-hmm. want to go with a group. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I like ice skating a lot and they, I live like five minutes from the Utah Olympic oval, which is where they did the Olympics in 2002. Okay. And I live like five minutes from that. And it's like this giant, like oval ice rink. And I used to go there like all the time and they closed that. So I'm like excited for them to open that. I'm like, but you don't really touch anybody when you ice skate anyway, especially on the giant, like oval thing you're like not even near people um but they closed it <laughs> is that something you're looking forward to the most I, out of everything as far as opening back up that's that's one of the things for sure hobbies, I'll say. as i say as far as hobbies not you know essential stuff yeah yeah i'm i'm excited for the ice skating to open and the movie theaters too and just like random restaurants where you can like sit inside <laughs> oh yeah i do miss going like not being able to eat since sometime in March or February, whenever I went out last, it's so different. Not that I, I am the type of person I do like to get my food and bring it home at times and just sit and watch a movie and eat. But I do now it's making me miss those couple of times where you go out and just grab a bite to eat, eat it there. You don't have to worry about anything. You pay your food, pay for your food, you know, you leave the waiter a tip and go on about your business and just. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's weird, like with people not go in places like my friend owns an ice cream shop and so I like I'm in there like all the time and it used to be like all these people and stuff but now they're like not allowed to sit in there so they like moved all the chairs out and so like when I go in there like I like still stay in there but like other people like have to just grab their stuff and like go then they all like look at me like what are you doing in here my friend has to be like she can be in here (laughs) she's good she's good (laughs) well that's cool though yeah now are your friends and family into your movies yeah, yeah, they're very supportive, which is awesome. Um, it's like, yeah, it's really fun to have them see it, like, come to the premieres. And even, like, this one with Abigail, we couldn't have our premiere premiere, but, like, it was super fun to, like, have everybody over and, like, have an Abigail party and watch it and stuff. I'm, like, I'm really lucky with my with my friend group. They're, like, they're awesome. They're very supportive. That's cool. That's really cool. Are any of your friends, as far as that group you're talking about, are they into movies as far as like acting? Or um, or? One of them is an actor and one of them is a uh, like crew person. Like he's done like DP work and stuff. Not, not really like right now, but like in the past, um, mm-hmm. he has experience in that. 
and then a couple of them are like trying to be actors um but for the most part i'm kind of the only one that's like this actively in the industry okay um yeah but i did i have met a few of them through the industry which is cool that's no that's really cool because you guys have like that similarity which yeah it's important for sure. it's important with friends to an extent just so you have that kind of commonality i guess people they understand what you're going through or what you're doing as far as like hey i gotta go i gotta go yeah. i'm not itching you guys but i really gotta prepare for this role and they're just like oh, I get mm -hmm. it. yeah well, that's good though that's good i'm glad i'm just glad to see how happy you are and just it's so cool and just how much you've grown over well from when i've talked to you guys over the year mm -hmm. and i can't wait again i'm just excited to see more work from you excited yeah. to see more work from you yeah i can't wait for my things to come out I can't wait either. I, I really can't wait for the crumbs thing because I know we, again, we couldn't even discuss it then. We still can't discuss it now. Yeah. But Maybe after it comes out, they might be more loose with what yeah. I say. I know they're very, they're I, very strict with what I say. And um, like they're, they're, they've been very, uh, they've been very strict this whole production. Um, it's been very secretive. Like uh, you'll see in the movie, we have um, a set that's Dr. Crumbs laboratory and um, Dr. Crumb's laboratory set was so cool and so like intricate and everything, but it was like, it was built in, so like we had like the whole location like over here and then like across the street there was like a barn and in the barn they built this laboratory set and it was like all these like tubes and everything and you could like switch it on and it would all light up and bubble and it was really, really cool, but they had it, it was like in this barn like curtained off with like black curtains mm -hmm. and like only certain people were like allowed in there and um like even like certain crew people and stuff like weren't allowed to go in there it was just like the director and the dp and like the actors that were in the scene at the time mm -hmm. and um like whoever and we were like it was very very like roped off <laughs> thing like like who could go in there but it it was really cool and it like it added a, a level of magic to it because it was like supposed to be this like secretive thing but um i'm just gonna say just because i like living on the edge um before we shot anything in there um okay so before we shot anything in there uh it was curtained off and they were like uh they i think they showed it to me because like i'm victoria crumb so like um they they like let me tour it but they're like uh they kind of said that it's like this thing and we're not really supposed to go in there and stuff and we're not supposed to take any pictures of it they wouldn't even let the behind the scenes photographers in there a lot of the time and so of course I go in there like before we shot any scenes and I videotaped it and mm -hmm. I sent it to like one person but like I only sent it to like one or two people but because <laughs> I, I like I knew like I mean if they hadn't said like this is a secret thing I probably like wouldn't have thought to do that but since they said like you're not supposed to do this I'm like well you know what I'm going to be doing today. Yep. So, um, also I, okay. I want to go get something. I'll be right back. Yep. I, um, I like to, I like to steal like a small item from film sets. Um, and I haven't always done this. Was, this is just within the past like year or whatever. And so this is this little burlap squirrel and I stole it from the crumb set. Nice. And so it's really funny because, I was just like, I need to steal something. And that was on the set and I took it. And there's this, uh, we had a lot of actors in the crumbs. They were all really awesome. And I'm not gonna say who this was, but um, I was talking to one of my many, many co-stars on that and a very, very talented professional actress. And um, so she kind of like intimidated me at the time just because she had been in uh, a lot of stuff and I just thought she was so, so talented and um so I wanted to like start a conversation with her but I didn't really know like what to say at the time and so I was going to tell her that story about how I took that squirrel um because I, then I thought we'd have this little moment and so I I asked her have you ever stolen anything from a film set and I thought she'd be like yeah I took this and this and it would be the story and then I could be like I took the squirrel and I'd be like haha um and so I'm like I'm like, have you ever stolen anything from a film set? And this actress, um, being much more of a professional than I am, <laughs> just looks at me and goes, no, I never have. And that's like all she said. And I was like, oh, <laughs> never mind then. <laughs> Don't know why I brought that up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and that's like, oh. So uh, nobody ever knew. But um, I took this squirrel from the crumb set. Um, 
the best the best story of stealing something happened on a film called Circles that I did in North Carolina. It was awesome. It was like a dream because I go to North Carolina. I'd never been there before. I'd never been to the East Coast before. Um, and we were filming in an abandoned house, which is super cool. So I'm just like exploring this abandoned house because um, they let me like walk through it before we filmed anything. And um, I'm walking through and I, I find this wardrobe. It's like Narnia, you know, like I find this wardrobe and I look in this wardrobe and it has like a ton of really, really gorgeous, like really well preserved. They look like brand new um, vintage dresses. And I'm like, whoa, like, look at this. And I'm looking at them and every dress was like exactly my size, even down to like, like the waist and the neck and all these like exact things. It was like, they were all like exactly my size. And I just like find this wardrobe of like dresses. And I'm like, what the heck? Cause I love like fashion and stuff. And so, um, I did take a few things from that set, but I didn't dare take the dresses because they were so big. And I was like, how am I going to like get away with this? And so I took like five things, but the dresses weren't one of them. And I just kept, I kept going back and looking at the dresses in this wardrobe. I'm like, this, these are so cool. And then, um, the, the guy and the lady who used to own the house that were now like really, really old came, uh, back to see, because they, they just like left all their stuff there and like went away or whatever. But, um, we were filming this movie there and they came back to see that. And I think, I think that's really interesting that they didn't come back to see their own memories, but they came back because this movie was shooting there. I think that's like, it's weird what an impact, um, cinema has on, on people. But anyway, they came back to see this movie being filmed in their old house. And, um, I was like talking to the old lady that used to live there. She was like 90 and I'm like, I found that wardrobe of these dresses and those are beautiful and I really like those and and she's like I like, got oh, those and man it's like she didn't care about them at all and this crew lady was like you should give those to like your granddaughter or something she's like no I don't want those I'm just gonna leave those there and stuff and she didn't want them and I was like I love those and so she she was like well if you like them you can like take a few and I was like oh now I have permission you know so a few meaning like five or something and so I really wanted to take like a bunch and so there's this crew lady. She was our script supervisor and she was like my friend. Like I really, really liked her. We had a lot of fun together. And, um, I was like, you know, I could probably get her to help me like sneak a bunch of these out of here. So I went over to her and I'm like, Hey, um, I, I, I think I'm supposed to take like five, but I really want to take a lot. And, um, maybe cause she had this like white garbage bag. And I was like, maybe you could like, help me put some of them in there and then we can sneak them out. She goes, Oh, I have black garbage bags in my car. <laughs> I was like, okay, that works. And so I like go, go to her car, we get the garbage bags and we like put all these clothes in there. And then we're like walking. And, um, this one guy, I don't remember what he did on the movie. I think he was, yeah, he was a sound guy. Um, super nice guy too. I liked him a lot too. Um, we like walk past him and he like totally knew what we were doing. And he's like, Oh man, like, how are you going to take those back to Utah? And I'm like, sure. and so, um, this, this script supervisor <laughs> brings me back to my hotel room and we lug all these dresses into the hotel room. And, um, this is after we'd like gone out to eat and stuff. This is the last day of production. And so, um, by the time I like got home or got back to the hotel and like showered and everything, I had like 25 minutes until the director was going to come pick me up for the wrap party that we were having that night. And I had all these dresses all over my hotel. And I was like, he can't see that I took this many dresses. He's awesome. I really, he's, he's one of my, like, I really liked him as a director and like as a person, I like him a lot. Um, like he wasn't like super serious or anything, but I just like didn't want to know that I took all these dresses. And so I had all these dresses and there was like a full length mirror in the hotel. And so like, I just grabbed in 25 minutes, I grabbed every dress and I tried it on like super, super fast. And because I knew that not all these were going to fit in the suitcase. And so I had to try them on like super fast. And then the ones that fit, I hurried and like took off and roll up and put it in the suitcase. And the ones that like didn't fit or like had a stain or something on it, I just like threw it like wherever I could, like under the bed or like in the drawer, or, like wherever. And so I was just kind of like, I was like trying on these dresses, like a quick change artist, like as fast as I could put the ones that I was going to wear in the suitcase, hit all the other ones. And then the director like comes to the door and I'm just like, hi, Jerry, what's up? And just like, I'm not casual. 
and um, I just left all the dresses in the hotel. So um, they probably like found them all. And I was, I was actually like got worried. Like, what if they like try to ship them to me or something? And like <laughs> the production finds out, but they didn't. So, um, uh, but anyway, I have like, I have like 10 or 15, like really pretty vintage dresses now um, oh. that I do wear because they're like from the thirties and forties. So it's not like 1800s dresses or something you can never wear, but like they're definitely things you can incorporate into a nowadays outfit. And, um, yeah, I have all these things now. <laughs> it's really cool. But that, that story is like a dream. That's like something that I would like make up to happen for myself. Like, that's amazing. That is, that's one of the, my favorite stories that's ever happened to me. That's cool. That, that would be a really funny reenactment, especially like where you're trying everything on and then just, okay, no, this is no, this is no, put it in the drawer. This, most this. of them, most of them were yes, but there were a few like, cause they weren't all going to fit. And so I was like, most like in the suitcase i mean, and yeah but it was it was crazy they were all like, exactly my size it was like a magic closet or something but a couple of them did have like stains or something or just two that were similar or whatever and so i was just like trying to hide them like everywhere i'm like oh, like put these aside and the director came and i like hid them all <laughs> it was really fun awesome. <laughs> and i i really do think it's cool because i feel like if i was an actor not the dresses. I'm not going to take dresses. I'm not going to wear yeah. them. But as far as, as far as just grabbing something off set, I think it's awesome because it, you have like that memory. Like I was on this set. I did this movie. Yeah, exactly. You know, the only, I should have taken something else from Abigail. The only, I only stole one thing from Abigail and that was, um, uh, so like, you know, at the beginning, I can, I can spoil this because it's the first scene, but at the beginning where we come and we're like in the hotel room with all like the duffel bag of, of money, I took like one of those uh, $100 bills, not like a lot of them, just like one of them. And it was cool because it said for motion picture use only. And then I like wrote Abigail on it. So, but I mean, that's a really cool souvenir, but that's the only thing that I took from that set. But it, that's all I need. <laughs> no, that's, <laughs> that's a really cool souvenir. That's that's an awesome souvenir. I, see, mm -hmm. me, I would have taken it in too far and probably took like the, just one little stack of it. Yeah, I wish, I wish that I had taken a stack because then I could, I wanted, I like thinking about it now I'm like that would have been fun to like pass out to people like give people that I know like the motion picture use only money yeah, um would have been like a cool little uh, present or whatever but I only took one bill but next time I work with motion picture money because you're not allowed to use real money in a film you have to use the, the ones that say motion picture use only um but next time I work with that I'm gonna like take a stack and then like give them to people <laughs> and write them like a note on it yeah because I look at I mean something like that I look at it, it would be a cool thing as a fan It'd be cool to just autograph a few to give. Maybe say say you take twenty, just throw a number out there. Five mm -hmm. of them you give to fans. You autograph them, send them to fans, or sell whatever the case may be. And then the rest you do with whatever you want to do with. Keep some for yourself, and maybe give some to your friends and family. Mm -hmm. That's I think that's cool. That would be fun. Really cool. I'll have to do that sometime. That's really freaking cool. And again, I feel like any set that I'm on, if I was you know in the movie, I'm like okay, I, I need to take some just something that. Yeah was in the movie even yeah i've started i've started doing that and also recently i've started um like the just like the the last thing that i did the north carolina one in in september um that was the first one i did this on but i'm gonna do it more like i had everybody at the end like sign my script like a yearbook like have everybody like that worked on the cast and crew like write me like a little message like like it's a yearbook basically like in my script somewhere like on the front page or like the back or like whatever um and i really liked that a lot so um I'm going to like do that for all the future productions. I actually have that. Um, I actually have like a regular just notebook that I use as that. And like have my friends write me messages in cause I love like handwriting and like notes. So um, I do that. Like I have like a notebook that I have like my just random friends write stuff in, but um, I'm going to continue to do that on the movies. Like have people sign the script cause that was really fun when I had them do that. That's awesome. that's, that's no, it's something like that's really, really cool too. Cause again, it's just, it's that experience you don't know you'll ever have with those with that group of people again. Yeah, for sure. You got to share that experience similar to a high school yearbook. You're not going to have that same experience with those group of people again. So, mm -hmm. you know, the few people you pick as far as school goes, you pick, hey, you 20 people, whatever, you guys sign this. And then with that, like, hey, I want everybody that was involved in this movie to sign this. Leave a little nice message and just sign it. Mm -hmm. And I can see that becoming a trend, so to speak, where other people that you work with, maybe they'll take that into their next set and like, hey, we all work together. That's, you know, I think no, that's a real, that's an excellent idea. It's awesome. Yeah, it's fun. It's awesome. And this, this was a fun episode again. I greatly appreciate you coming on again. 
Yeah, for sure. It was fun. I'd love to have you on again once you have more, you know, when, I mean, whenever, if you want to come on and review a movie, that's cool too. But if you want to wait until you have more workout, that's also cool. Mm -hmm. But if there's anything you want to plug to tell the fans where they can find you or where, what you want them to look out for or what they can watch now, you, you can go right ahead and do that. Okay. Um, well, please watch Abigail Hunting. It's on Amazon Prime. And um, oh, that's the one that's out right now. But um, also The Crumbs will be out this summer and The 13th Cross will be out later this year. And those are all features. And I would love it if you would watch those. Um, you won't regret it. They're amazing. And I'm really proud of them. And uh, follow me on Instagram or Facebook or wherever you want to follow me. <laughs> What's your Instagram? It's uh, it's Chelsea Amber Yurkovitz. So I just like put my middle name in there because I wanted to. Um, but like if you just put Chelsea Yurkovitz, I'm sure it'll come up there because I have my name, like my just Chelsea Yurkovitz under it. But my handle is Chelsea Amber Yurkovitz. Okay, cool, cool. Everybody, definitely go check her out. Definitely give her a follow. And you got to watch Abigail Haunting. It's an awesome freaking movie. I really, really enjoyed it. <laughs> I can't wait to see more of her work. And as always, I'll see you in your nightmares. And thank you again for coming on here, Chelsea. See you later. <laughs>